everybody, Christy Glass here with a video for you here on YouTube. Today I'm going to feature 10 patterns that are perfect for indie dyed yarns. If you're just joining me here on YouTube for the first time, I have the majority of my new fresh content on Patreon. There is a link to that underneath this video, patreon.com slash Christy Glassnitz, where you will receive weekly videos, inspiration, tutorials, live whip Wednesdays, Zoom nights, all the things. We have a beautiful fiber community there on Patreon and you are invited to join us. I will be putting new videos up here on YouTube occasionally. And of course there are videos from the past that you can enjoy. So make sure that you like and subscribe and turn on your notifications for Christy Glassnitz. But now let's get to my top 10 patterns for indie dyed yarns. Starting with number 10, we have Chaika by Midori Hirose. I love this pattern for indie dyed yarns because it has such a funky and fun collar. And I used an indie dyed yarn in DK weight here on the bottom. This is Primrose Yarn Co. And on the top, I have a sparkle skein held double with the feather base from Hedgehog Fibers, which is another very popular sort of OG indie dyer from Ireland. And I just feel like this pattern really supports having something fun and funky in the dye job. So that's Chaika by Midori Hirose. Number nine are the Underwing Mitts by Erica Heuser. These mitts are so cool. I love seeing all of the different versions of them and I really feel like indie dyed yarn is the way to go to give this make a more special feel. I don't remember all of the yarns I used on this so I will link to the finished object video of this underneath here so you can check it out yourself but I love this project for indie dyed yarns. Number eight is the Erica by Jane Richmond. Her version of this has solid colors and I love it very much, but I received this beautiful skein from Fiber for the People and I thought it would look so stunning in this Erica. I love how you can see these bold pops from the indie dyed skein and I made a special consideration as I was putting together my fringe to have the fringe imitate the indie dyed yarn as much as possible. So number eight is Erica by Jane Richmond. Number seven is Scarfy Thing by Beata of Hedgehog Fibers. This is a free pattern, and this is a wonderful way to showcase indie dyed yarns. You can see here, I did use Hedgehog Fibers in more of the semi-solid tones, but I do think this would be such an amazing adventure if you were actually using speckled yarns in place of the semi-solids. You can support all of the speckled yarns with a semi-solid on the background. You can do something crazy and speckled as the background and then have your semi-solids in these very graphic shapes. And then you can have fun with the tassels with all of that beautiful indie dyed yarns that you're using. You could even make multicolored tassels depending on which indie dyed yarns you choose. I love Scarfy Thing for indie dyed yarn. Number six is Radiance by Romy Hill. And this pattern is actually a pattern hack. I have talked about this pattern so much because I love it. I have knit it three times. This yarn is using Clurindrad. This yarn is Asylum Fibers. And this yarn is also Asylum Fibers. I love taking the indie dyed speckly skeins and pairing them with a semi-solid and putting them together in this beautiful traditional lace pattern. I love the juxtaposition of all of those things together and I highly recommend Radiance for use of your indie dyed yarns. This is DK weight, so it will knit up so quickly. That's why you'll knit three, just like me. Number five is Essien by Stephen West. This is one of his earliest patterns and you will see in his sample that he used a gray and a cream and that is lovely, but I loved reimagining it this way with indie dyed yarns and changing up the texture. I have mohair here in one of the stripes. This is also DK weight. So it knits up very quickly. I used some gorgeous garn sore, which they're no longer dying, and some swift fibers, and I, and I don't remember the other ones. <laughs> so again, I will link to this video underneath here so you can check it out. I love taking this more traditional offering and adding indie dyed yarns to it. It makes it a total party. Number four is Ziggy Interrupted by Sandra Paul. This is a crochet pattern. And it is just the most beautiful creation. I used, 
I think 29 different colors of indie dyed yarn. This is perfect if you have lots of mini skeins that you've been collecting over the years. And it is very repetitive, so you will get the hang of it. A lot of first time crocheters have tackled this pattern and been successful. And it is such an art piece, perfect for your indie dyed mini skeins or scraps. Number three is Sorrel by Woolen Pine. And the reason why this is such an amazing make for indie dyed yarns is you choose a series of indie dyed yarns. For mine, I chose three, one, two, three, and a solid mohair, and you combine them all together, and it creates this gradient effect that is so much fun to see come together on your needles. You can experiment with different colors of mohair or more than three shades of indie dyed yarn, whatever you want to do. It is so much fun to watch as the indie dyed skeins change when they're combined with mohair. Number two is the After Sweater by me, Christy Glass. I love this pattern for indie dyed yarn. This is DK weight yarn, and I think it is so much fun to see each of the different indie dyed skeins in bobble form and then repeat it here in the cuff. It was so much fun to knit, and I loved seeing all of the different beautiful yarn here. This is Dye Lot Studio yarn shown in this sweater, and of course, that contrast of the chartreuse. This is a really fun make if you want to showcase indie dyed yarns. My number one pattern for using indie dyed yarns brings us back to Hedgehog. This is the Reykjavik Soft by Meiju KP. I'm sure I did not say that correctly. I'm guessing it's an Icelandic designer. I loved this sweater because it's a traditional lopi, but I used Hedgehog Erin Merino for the yoke. This color way was inspired by a photo that I saw on an Instagram called Blooming Wooly. I did not see her completed sweater, but she was using solid colors that are very similar to these, the pink, the blue, the lavender, the red and orange, the cream, the gold. She had solid bits from her stash that she was putting together to create the yoke. And I took it a step further and applied Indie dyed yarns of similar shades to my yoke to imitate what she was doing. It was so much fun to have all of this speckling happening. It's sort of messy, sort of like painting with a really cool palette, and I really loved how it came together. Thank you so much for joining me for my top 10 patterns to use Indie dyed yarn. I would love to see you over at Patreon. The link is underneath this video, patreon.com slash christyglassknits. If you'd rather skip Patreon for now, please make sure that you like and subscribe this video and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss the next one. And I will see you next time here on Christy Glass Knits. Bye. Thank you.